before watching this video, you probably want to know how much a difference these methods can actually make. Well, see for yourself. Watching on a bigger screen is recommended. Life, Life is, is just always mysterious and surprising. You never know what's around the next corner. You never, you never know what's around the next corner. The Sony Alpha mirrorless series of cameras are pretty revolutionary. They have amazing photo quality, they have great video quality in 4K, and not only that, they boast all of that in a compact lightweight body. Now this video is going to be specifically more towards the 6000 series, so we're talking about the 6000, the 63000, the 64000, the 65000, and the 66000. However, I've also noticed this issues with some A7 cameras as well, although it's not as pronounced. Now, if you're a content creator like I am, one point about these cameras are really frustrating and obviously you're here because of the title of the video, which is that the 1080p looks very soft. And as you can see in the beginning of the video, it's not really something that you would expect out of a camera of this tier. It kind of looks like an old iPhone footage, to be honest. And it's not like the camera isn't capable of the technology. It has the sensor technology. It has a good enough lens. In those footage we showed in the beginning, I filmed it with the kit lens, which is probably the standard, the 3.5 to 5.6, 16 to 50 millimeter. That's just the standard kit lens. So I'm showing if you can make that much of a difference with the right settings to make your footage sharper with the kit lens, you can do this with any lens. But what I'm trying to say is that your camera is capable of having the good footage, but it just seems like for some reason, whenever we record in that 1080, it just doesn't look good. So how do you fix it? So before we go into exactly how to fix this issue, we're gonna go over a couple theories of why this issue exists. Because in order to fix an issue, it's really useful to know why it happens in the first place so you can counteract those measures. So the first theory why this issue occurs where the 1080p looks really soft while the camera is obviously capable of higher quality is that so Sony maliciously does this to make sure they don't replace the video camera line. Now, this kind of seems completely crazy at first, but it is theoretically possible. Sony makes different lines of cameras such as cinema cameras, video cameras, and the prosumer line, which is where the A6000 seems to land. If these cameras could do everything like something like the FS5 could do, which is very comparable in the 4K mode. When you shoot in 4K24 on the A65 and 4K on the FS5 video camera, they're actually very comparable. Sometimes you can even get better looking footage out of the A65. Personally, I don't think this is the issue. I don't think they would maliciously do this, but if you like conspiracy theories, you like making up theories and stuff like that, this is something that you can go off of. The second reason, which is in between the first theory and the third theory, is that the Sony programmers and engineers focused on other features of the camera other than 1080p first. And as a result, they just kind of got left behind. Because there's different types of consumers when you buy a camera. There's prosumers who want the absolute best quality. They want the sharpest image. They want to have the cleanest looking image, stuff like that. For those users, the engineers realized they would probably dedicate it shoot in 4K to really maximize the footage. And as a result, they made sure the 4K was spot on, which it really is. It's pretty great other than the shutter, uh, I can't remember the name, shutter warping. <laughs> Somehow I forgot what it was. Rolling shutter, that's the word. I, my mind blanked. But anyways, for those people who want the best of the best, they will, the engineers made sure that it was available to them. And then to the other content creators who wanted more to focus on content, they're not like specific cinematographers, they didn't go to film school or something, who are fine with 1080p, the engineers probably realized they would be fine if they didn't refine the code of decoding to 1080, so it looks a little worse because they didn't put as much time into it. This is a little bit more reasonable theory and it is another reason why the 1080p on your camera could look soft. Now the third reason is the most holistic slash ethical slash more space giving is that it just wasn't possible at the time. If you've owned an A6500 or some of the other 6000 cameras, you know that in 4K mode 
and when you're pushing the camera it overheats a lot and especially if you're just recording out in the daylight when the sun hits the camera it overheats you have to switch batteries things can happen and because of this it's possible that it just the code the processing power of the chip is just not strong enough to have good 1080p quality now you may be asking 1080p should be less processing on the chip because there's less pixels that are outputted but if you keep in mind the camera has to downscale from 6k to 4k that's what happens when you record in 4k 24 frames per second it takes the 6k from the from the sensor and it downscales it to 4k now it's possible that the algorithm just isn't strong enough to downscale that 6k into good 1080p and that's why it looks soft so basically the third reason is just stating it just wasn't possible at the time they didn't have the processing power and yeah it just doesn't look good because we don't we didn't they didn't have the technology at the time now whether you believe the first reason or you believe the third reason or you're in the middle with the second reason you're not an engineer at sony you're a person who wants to make good quality sharp video and you want to make best of what you got to do so what can you do as a video maker to make your 1080p look sharp now the first method that we're going to talk about and my test is the best method it produces the best results but there's a little there's some caveats here and there the first method is probably the simplest as well just shoot in 4k now this doesn't entirely make that much sense the entire point of this video is to tell you how to shoot good 1080p footage doesn't shooting in 4k defeat the purpose well i'm not saying that the video you export is in 4k like in the beginning clips where we show the differences the before and after it's night and day and that footage you were watching is not 4k it's 1080p what i'm saying is that you want to record 4k in the camera then use something like premiere pro and final cut so you can downscale that 4k to 1080p this works because 4k has a lot more pixels than 1080p now you may be asking how does this work at the end it's both 1080p why would one look better than the other one thing you need to keep in mind is that pixel quantity is not the same as pixel quality pixel quality trumps pixel quantity in pretty much every aspect if you even have 720p footage that has really high quality pixels that footage is going to look way better than 4k with a bunch of random pixels because if the pixels are bad quality you can essentially have 4k footage which is essentially just random pixels just rainbows on the screen if it gets all of the wrong pixels and that picture obviously isn't going to represent your subject well when you shoot in 4k there essentially be a grid of pixels and when you downscale that to 1080p all of the neighboring pixels will average down onto one pixel and when you have four they could be noisy pixels you can average it down into a nice looking pixel and that will make your footage look sharper now if the answer was so simple just shoot in 4k why don't everyone just do that everyone shoots in 4k down to 1080 problem solved well if you know about file formats and the options you have on the 6000 of series of cameras you probably already know the caveat which is you cannot record in standard frames per second or in many frames per second when you're shooting in 4k pretty much the only option you're going to have at least on my camera which is 65000 is you can only shoot in 4k 24 frames per second if you want to shoot in 60 frames per second you're limited to 1080p which means if you want to shoot sports like skateboarding snowboarding mountain biking something like that you want smooth footage or you want to slow down and post you're kind of out of luck you won't be able to get capture these extra frames and also youtube natively is a 30 frames per second content hosting service pretty much it's coded and designed to be 30 frames per second it's kind of the standard for online media nowadays it's 30 frames per second and most likely your viewers won't be able to tell the difference between 24 and 30 frames per second but if you're really geeky about the specific frames per second you want to use this will be an issue now one of you guys in the comments is probably going to be like but wait the camera can record 4k 30. yes it can record 4k 30 but it crops in quite significantly you can see we have a footage of a stop sign we'll put it up here you can see the first footage we're going to show right now is 4k 24 and when it's 4k 30 it's cropped in and this is because uh, just how the camera processes things it's not able to use the entire sensor when recording in 4k 30 which means it crops in and it doesn't use the full sensor so this means first of all your footage will look closer which may be a good thing but if you're trying to get wide angle shots it kind of defeats the purpose and the second thing is that it will get worse low light coverage because less of the sensors you use which means it has less light less pixels to get in for the low light so your low light footage is going to look noisier as well but 
if you're fine with the 4K 30 crop in or you're fine with shooting in 24 frames per second, this is probably the cleanest solution that you're gonna get. This is the method that I used for the beginning of the video to downscale the 4K footage to 1080p so your 1080p looks really good. Now let's say you wanna shoot in 1080p because the 4K takes too much space or you just want to use that smooth footage. Let's say you're getting a video of someone going down a mountain bike and you want to get that 60 frames per second and you want to shoot in 1080. Are you screwed? Of course not. There is a solution to this. And this solution involves probably one of the most complicated but most rewarding aspects of learning to master a Sony Alpha camera. And you guessed it, it's picture profiles. Now, you can go on YouTube, you can search on all these videos about what's the best picture profile you use for your video. But what really matters is your situation. Some situations will require different picture profiles. For example, a low light picture profile will not be the same as a daylight picture profile. If you use the same picture profile for both cases, it, you won't get up good results. Now, if you don't know what picture profiles are, it's essentially a way to save time in post and make your footage more flexible into the way you want it. Basically, you can change what colors are, you can change the black gamma, the level of the blackness, if it's darker or brighter. You can even change individual colors, RGB, CMYK. You can change those individual colors and how the camera sees it and presents it to the, to the monitor or your TV or whatever, wherever you're watching your footage. Now the picture profile, there's a lot of settings. It can get really complicated really fast, but if the only thing you wanna care is the sharpness of that footage, you're tired of getting those landscape shots that look like a bunch of pixel garbage, the easiest way the fastest way to counteract this is to mess with the details. In the detail settings, this is kind of like artificial sharpening. And if you know what artificial sharpening is, it can look really bad. Like a lot of beginners or just people who don't know what they're doing, they're crank up the over sharpened footage and it kind of just looks like, kind of just looks weird. So if you crank up the detail too much, it will look like over sharpened footage. And a lot of times when you're shooting in 4K, you actually want to turn down the detail because the 4K is sharp already. However, you're shooting in, 1080p. The Sony Alpha 6000 series does not handle 1080p well. So you can actually push this artificial sharpening a little bit and your footage will look better than without the artificial sharpening. You can also do this in post, but I found that doing it in camera just a little bit is helpful than just not doing it. So instead of having your detail down to negative seven or something, I recommend sticking between the numbers zero and two. And you can see it's a minor difference, but if you really care about pixel peeping and you're watching this video because you want to have good sharpness, this will make quite a dif significant difference in your post-processing. Also, if you're struggling with picture profile because there's too many options and you don't know how to get the perfect one, I'm gonna say it's not perfect. It's impossible to get one perfect picture profile. However, what you can do is have three or four picture profiles and depending on the lighting, depending on the situation, if you're recording an interview shot or a sports shot, you choose the right picture profile. And if you guys want a guide on how to make those picture profiles, leave a comment, subscribe, and let me know you want a video on that because I can cover that topic. But so far, I don't really know what you guys want and I don't think it's really necessary. But if you guys really want to have a list of how to make perfect picture profiles, leave a comment, subscribe, like the video and then I'll see the feedback and I'll make one. And that will be probably the next one or two videos will go over that. Now, let's say you don't, you're messed with the picture profiles, you don't wanna shoot in 4K and you wanna have a more holistic solution. You don't wanna do either of these things or you're still unsatisfied with the camera's raw 1080p footage output. Now the third method is a little bit more continuous. We're gonna make an analogy for it. Now let's say you're in a wood shop and you have a hammer. You're not gonna use that hammer to screw in a screw. That hammer is meant for hammering your nails. In the same aspect, you're gonna want to learn how to use your tool. Instead of the tool being the hammer, you want your tool to be the camera. That's how you master the camera. You're gonna play to its strengths and you're gonna try to hide the weaknesses. Like you wanna hammer your nails all the time, you're not gonna, you're trying, you're gonna try to avoid screws because your hammer can't deal with that. Now the first way to do this is to soften the background. As you can see, we're putting some footage demonstrating this. As you can see in the footage, the edges aren't necessarily very sharp. If you actually pixel peep and look at the pixels, it's the same 1080p that can often come off as soft. However, because of the background being blurrier, it makes the foreground more sharp because it emphasizes the foreground. This is more of an artistic thing, but if you wanna just convey your image viewers a really clean image, this works perfectly fine. 
And if you focus more on the 1080p footage by focusing your foreground, blurring out the background, this will probably make a bigger effect than any of the first two methods because carefully framing your shots and making sure your shot is perfect is gonna go miles longer than having the perfect camera. You gotta get the lighting right. I'm not a great example of that. I don't have any lighting right now. I wish I could, but just the living arrangement I'm in right now doesn't really offer the best way to make a studio. However, you can see, it's handled quite fine. So the second thing you want to do is avoid landscape shots. Avoid pictures of trees, mountains, uh, a lot of birds. Basically, avoid where there's a lot of leaves. That's where I found the 1080p really looks bad, especially if you're going to film near a garden. Now this kind of sucks, but what you can do is pick and choose your battles. You want to get the best tool for the best situation. So for the landscape shots, you can shoot in 4K and then downscale to 1080p. And most likely, if you're gonna shoot that, uh, shoot that probably stabilized 4K footage of a tree or a landscape, you probably don't need that 60 frames a second. You're not recording action sports. You don't necessarily need to slow down the footage. I know slowing down the footage can make it look nicer, but you're kind of stuck with what you got. For most cases, you can get away with standard 4K24 when shooting landscape photos. Then when you're shooting more action photos, like you have a guy skateboarding through the garden or something, I don't know whatever action video you're making, you can switch that into 1080p. And because there's more action, there's more things moving in the photo, the sharpness won't be as important because this your viewer is going to be focused on the moving object. And because there's moving objects, the pixels are moving, uh, sharpness isn't as much of a concern then with the landscape because I got to be honest, some of the landscape or garden shots I got with the 1080p kind of just look terrible. My, my phone could shoot better footage than that. So that's how you play to the strengths of your camera. So pick and choose your battles. Shoot in 4K when you don't need that 60 frames per second and where the camera struggles in that 1080p. Feel free to shoot in 1080p where the camera is fine with the 1080p with action footage, with footage you know that it can handle well, like clean backgrounds, not a lot of leaves, not a lot of things, of pixels to for the camera to interpret, not a lot of edges. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you guys found those tips helpful, leaving a comment and subscribing would really mean a lot to me. And if you guys have any questions of your own, be sure to leave them. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you guys want more deeper insight into these reasons, just methods, you really want to crank out the best quality out of your camera without investing into a new camera, I'll leave a link to my website in the description. You can visit the website. It will go more in depth about these pixel peeping and what you can do really to up your game onto your alpha series. And there will be more guides there too, but I'll leave the guide to the specific article on a website detailing more about this topic if you're interested. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and yeah, stay tuned for the next episode or episode. I'm not really sure. Is this a series? I didn't, I didn't think that through. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You never know what's around the next corner.